The FBI fights crime within the borders of the US and beyond. In the course of operations, criminals may elude arrest. As of September 2022, over 500 names had been listed on its most wanted list, being removed only in the event of death, arrest, or drop charges. Today, we'll be looking at the FBI's 10 most wanted criminals and why they're on the list. Number 1. Omar Alexander Cardenas 27-year-old Omar Alexander is wanted by the FBI for murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. On the 15th of August 2019, no one at Hair Icon Barbershop, California, could have imagined the violent crime that was about to take place just outside its doors. It was a large outdoor shopping center, and Jabali Dumas had no idea that death had come knocking in a sudden and gruesome shape. Cardenas shot him several times using a semi-automatic handgun, and Jabali died right there on the spot after some of the shots hit him in the head. About seven months later, on the 3rd of April 2020, an arrest warrant was issued in the Superior Court of Los Angeles County with a murder charge. Cardenas fled, and all efforts to capture him were futile. Again, on the 2nd of September 2021, a federal arrest warrant was issued from the United States District Court in California's Central District, and he was charged with unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Omar Alexander Cardenas has been on the run ever since, and is still yet to be captured. The FBI speculates that he may be in either the Southern California, where he has loved ones, or Mexico. Number two, Alejandro Rosales Castillo. Also known as Alex Castillo, and about five other names, the 23-year-old American is on the run after allegedly committing first-degree murder. In 2016, Castillo was only 17 years old when he shot his ex-girlfriend and co-worker in the head, killing her. The victim, Truk Kwan, Sandy, Lai Le, and Castillo met at a Charlotte restaurant where they both worked. They became friends and started dating, but their relationship ended shortly after for unknown reasons. Investigations following Sandy's murder revealed that Castillo owed her about $1,000 and had texted her on the 9th of August 2016, asking for them to meet at a quick trip in Charlotte so he could pay his debt. This began a series of events that led to the death of 23-year-old Sandy. Castillo had no intention to pay off his debt. Instead, he forced her to withdraw all the money in her account, after which he drove her to a woody area just outside Charlotte, shot her in the head, and dumped her body in a ravine. Her body was found about a week later, on the 17th of August 2016. Another person was involved in this sequence of events, Castillo's then-girlfriend, Fiesta. She was said to have dropped Castillo off at the meeting with Sandy and then picked him up after he had committed the murder. They both fled and escaped to Mexico. In October 2016, Fiesta turned herself in and claimed they had been hiding with Castillo's cousins at Aguas Calientes until Castillo disappeared. Number 3. Michael James Pratt In 2012, Michael James Pratt, a native of New Zealand, moved to San Diego, where he began to perpetrate atrocious crimes. He is the co-owner of pornographic websites Girls Do Porn and Girls Do Toys, where he posted videos of young women engaging in sexual activity. He is charged with sex trafficking of a minor and by force, fraud and coercion, conspiracy to commit sex sex trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion, production of child pornography, sex trafficking by force, fraud, and coercion, and criminal forfeiture. Pratt and his co-workers employed several means to attract young women from all over America and Canada. They would put out internet advertisements for clothed modeling jobs, only for women to respond and discover that they were expected to make pornographic content. Afterwards, they were held against their consent, coerced to engage in sexual acts against their will, and many were sexually assaulted. Pratt even had female associates who were paid to convince women to come on board and promised that videos of their sexual acts would not be posted online. Pratt's co-owner, Matthew Isaac Wolf, pled guilty in July to a plethora of charges, including sex trafficking by fraud, force, and coercion. He admitted that over 100 girls were coerced into making videos with promises of pay ranging from $3,000 to $5,000, and that the videos would not be available in the US. But they went ahead to share the videos on their US website. Wolf also spilled another can of worms, claiming that Pratt operated another website known as PornWikiLeaks.com, where he revealed personal information and social media accounts of women in pornography videos. He is still on the run, and there are great concerns that he may continue his dastardly acts in another location. Number 4. Ruja Ignatova 42-year-old Ruja Ignatova is currently the only woman on the FBI's top 10 wanted list of fugitives. She founded a large-scale Ponzi scheme called OneCoin, for which she became notoriously famous. Her crime trial began in 2012, when she was charged and 
convicted of fraud alongside her father in Germany. For this, she received a suspended sentence of 14 months. This means that her sentence was deferred while she was required to serve mandatory probation, during which her conduct would determine if she would still serve her jail sentence or not. However, this was not her last stint with the world of fraud. In 2013, she was involved in Bigcoin, a pyramid marketing scheme, but it was one coin that put her on the radar. In 2016, she presented herself as the Crypto Queen, saying she had come up with a new cryptocurrency that would rival the crypto giant Bitcoin. In front of thousands of people at the Wembley Arena, Ruja said, in two years, nobody will speak about Bitcoin anymore. I am sure in two years, we'll be the one with most cryptocurrency transactions globally because this coin is going to be number one worldwide. And people all over the world believed her and invested huge sums of money into the scheme. But suddenly, she disappeared. In October 2017, European OneCoin promoters came together for a meeting in Lisbon, Portugal. Ruja Ignatova was nowhere to be found, and soon it dawned on the world that she had fled, committing one of the biggest scams in history. Investigations revealed that two weeks later, she boarded a flight from Sofia to Athens and has not been heard from since then. To date, nothing substantial has been heard of her, and she's still on the run. The FBI speculates that she may have altered her physical appearance in order to evade arrest. Number 5. Arnoldo Jimenez When 26-year-old mother of two, Estrella Carrera, married Arnoldo Jimenez in May 2012, she could never have imagined that she would be murdered in her wedding dress by the man she married. The wedding took place on the 11th of May 2012 at Chicago City Hall. Following the wedding, they had dinner with members of their family and friends, after which they went to a club and remained there till around 4 a.m. the next day. The 12th of May 2012. Investigations revealed that a heated argument ensued in the vehicle, a black four-door 2006 Maserati. Jimenez stabbed his new wife multiple times, and an analysis of her body showed that she was stabbed at least 18 times. Her body was found one day at her Burbank apartment when her family got concerned that she had not come to pick up her children as agreed. She was found dead in a bathtub, where it appeared that she had been left to bleed to death. Her husband, Jimenez, was nowhere to be found. It is believed that he dragged her into the apartment and left her in the bathtub after stabbing her fatally in the car. Jimenez, who was said to have had a criminal history before killing his wife, was charged with first-degree murder on the 15th of May and has been on the run ever since. He confirmed in a phone call to Carrera's sister that he had left her bleeding after a heated argument. The FBI continues to track him and believes that he is hiding in Mexico. Number 6. Alexis Flores In 2000, Jorge Contreras, a resident of Philadelphia, decided to render an act of kindness to a homeless man. Contreras gave him clothing, shelter, and work. However, in an unfortunate Fortunate turn of events, he would find himself identifying one of the articles of clothing he gave this homeless man soaked in blood at a crime scene. This homeless man was Alexis Flores, but he identified himself as Carlos. In what turned out to be more than a mere coincidence, Flores disappeared, and a five-year-old girl was declared missing. Her name was Iriana de Jesus, and she was found five days later, on the 3rd of August. She had been raped, strangled, and wrapped in a bag. Close to her body was a t-shirt soaked in blood, which Contreras confirmed to be one of the articles of clothing he had given to Flores. He had fled. In 2002, he was arrested by the police for shoplifting, but it wasn't discovered that he was the wanted Carlos. Another two years passed, and the police were at Flores' residence again after a noise complaint. A forgery device was found in his home, which led to his arrest. When police officers searched his apartment further, they found pornographic materials littering the floor. After a 60-day incarceration, he was deported to Honduras, where he was born. In 2007, a DNA match revealed that Flores was the same man as the wanted Carlos from the year 2000. On the 22nd of March 2007, a search warrant was issued, and he is yet to be found. Number 7. Jose Rodolfo Villarreal Hernandez Also identified as El Gato, he is wanted for interstate stalking and conspiracy to murder for hire. Villarreal Hernandez is said to be a drug cartel boss and leader of the Beltran Leva drug trafficking organization, which operates in Mexico. It was said that following a conflict with a rival gang, the father of the drug cartel boss was murdered. He believed that the Gulf cartel was responsible and sought to take his revenge. Juan Jesus Guerrero Chapa, who was murdered by two hitmen sent by Villarreal Hernandez, was a lawyer who represented the leader of the Gulf cartel, Osiel Cardenas Guyen. Due to his association with his rival gang, Villarreal Hernandez believed that Guerrero was to blame for the death of his father. He swore revenge and hired two men to murder the lawyer-turned-US informant. On the 22nd of May 2013, Guerrero was ambushed and fatally shot in the company of his wife. Villarreal and the two assassins have remained in hiding till today. The United 
United States Department of State's Transnational Organized Crime Rewards Program is offering a reward of up to $1 million for any information that can lead to the arrest of Villarreal Hernandez. Number 8. Yulan Adone Archeya Carias Carias is believed to be the Honduran leader of the Mara Salvatrucha. The Mara Salvatrucha is often regarded as the most violent gang in the United States, also known as MS-13. The gang which originated in the streets of Los Angeles now has a widespread network that covers Central America and some parts of Europe. They are notorious for drug trafficking and violent fights with rival gangs. He is charged with racketeering conspiracy, conspiracy to possess machine guns and cocaine importation conspiracy and possession. Intelligence reports claim that he has been involved in activities that have aided the MS-13 faction operating in the US. Carias is also said to be one of the masterminds controlling cocaine smuggling from Honduras to America. He is suspected of being responsible for giving the order for the murder of members of rival gangs. The FBI believes that he is still in Honduras, actively providing cash, narcotics, and ammunition to gang members in the US. Also known by his nickname, Porky, he's an indigent of Honduras, who is said to speak only the Spanish language. He is being investigated as part of Joint Task Force Vulcan, an agency launched in August of 2019 dedicated to tracking down and dismantling the operations of MS-13. Number 9. Padresh Kumar Chetanbai Patel 32-year-old Patel is wanted for the murder of his wife, a native of India. Both Patel and his wife, 21-year-old Palak, were working an overnight shift at a Dunkin' Donuts store in Maryland on the 12th of April 2015. Surveillance camera footage shows them working together in the kitchen until they both move out of view. A few moments later, Patel re-emerges, but this time without his wife. He had murdered her. Many hours later, her body was found battered and stabbed several times with a kitchen knife. Investigations revealed that they were in a heated argument about whether or not to return to India or remain in the United States. Patel wanted them to remain in the US, but Palak wanted them to return to India. Unfortunately, she didn't get a chance to do either, as she was brutally murdered by her husband. Meanwhile, in the store, customers who had come in were not attended to and became concerned. A policeman was attracted by the growing number of people and decided to check on what was going on. He discovered Palak's body and after looking through the surveillance camera footage, it became clear what had occurred. Patel fled and was last seen at the Newark Penn Station in New Jersey. Number 10. Rafael Caro Quintero The notorious drug lord and leader of the now defunct Guadalajara cartel has been captured. In 1985, an undercover agent working with the United States Drug Enforcement Agency, Enrique Camarena, was kidnapped and brutally tortured and murdered by the Guadalajara cartel. Following the discovery of his body by the US government, an intense search began to hunt down and capture Caro Quintero, who was also responsible for the murder of a dental student, Alberto Radelat, in 1985. Caro Quintero sought refuge in Costa Rica, where he fled, but he was fished out not long after and sentenced to 40 years in prison in Mexico. However, after serving 28 years, in 2013, he was released after a loophole was found in his trial process. A Mexican court ruled that he should have been charged in a state court rather than a federal court. Shortly after his release, this ruling was reversed by Mexico's Supreme Court, but Caro Quintero was no nowhere to be found because he had fled. Still, the US was bent on seeing that he pay for his crimes. On July 15, 2022, he was re-arrested after evading arrest for several years. Mexican authorities have arrested Rafael Caro Quintero. He was fished out of a bush at Sinaloa by a search dog named Max. He is said to have shipped large amounts of illegal drugs into the United States and has lost his appeal not to be extradited to the US. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and click on any of these two videos for more informative of content.